Next up, we are going to find the domain of a cosecant function. We're going to do the same steps that we did in the previous example. What is the domain of f of theta equals 2 cosecant of 2 theta minus pi over 4? So the question we have to ask is, what number can we plug in so that we get an output for f of theta? Remember, domain is an input that yields an output. So another way to rephrase the question is, what are the set of angles that I cannot plug in and get a number back? So sometimes we want to write in terms of what we can't plug in, right? That works for domain, and then we just say everything else you can plug in. Okay, so for example, maybe we can plug in 2, and I'll get something back, right, or something like that. Maybe I can plug in pi over 6, and it'll work. Um, but the, the thing is, some angles probably won't work, right? And if we go back to our graphs, remember we looked at the graph of secant, um, and I talked about the fact that cosecant looks very similar. Well, they both have asymptotes. Okay, so that means there are certain numbers you can't plug, them into, uh, plug into them, no matter how you modify them. Okay, so we know that there's going to be those numbers. What are those angles that make those asymptotes for this function? Now, this has been modified. There's a 2 here, and there's a 2 pi minus pi over 4. So we definitely need to go through those steps I just taught you. For example, 1, finding the tangent input uh, domain. Step 1 is to write the function in terms of sine and cosine. Again, the reason we do that is because it gives us the denominator, and we cannot plug in, uh, we can't have 0 in the denominator. So cosecant is 1 over sine um, according to uh, reciprocal identity or uh, quotient identity. And therefore, we're going to keep the 2 and just write it 1 over sine of 2 theta minus pi over 4. Keep the same thing inside. Okay, so we know that this cannot be equal to 0, right? And that's why we do step 1. So step 2 is to set the denominator not equal to 0. So here was our denominator right here in the bottom, and we know that that cannot be equal to zero, so we're going to set it not equal to zero. Step three is to take the inverse of both sides. Again, the reason we do that is because it cancels the sign right here, and we're trying to solve for theta. We're trying to figure out what it can't be equal to. If we do it to the left, we have, it to, we have to do it to the right. So now that we've done step three, we have two theta minus pi over four is not equal to sine inverse of zero. So the next question is, what is sine inverse of zero? If we go back to our unit circle, it's everywhere where the y value is equal to zero. Well, we can see right here, sine is equal to zero at zero, and it's equal to zero at pi. And if we go all the way back around, it's going to be two pi as well. So when we go back to our domain, we're going to write zero pi, pi, and two pi. Those are all sine inverse of zero. And as I told you before, when you're doing domain, you want to write out three values. Okay, you want to write out three different values so that you can see the pattern. Now, if you look at the coefficients here, it goes 0, 1, 2. So the pattern is easy to recognize. It's just integers, right? Now, however, though, we do have 2 pi minus pi over 4 on the left. So not only do we have to evaluate this inverse for step 4, but we need to get pi by itself. So we're ultimately going to have to add pi over 4 and then divide by 2. That leads us to step 5. Isolate the variable. So first thing is we're going to add pi over 4 to both sides. So again, we're going to be adding that eventually uh, to each term inside of our sequence. And we're doing that so that we can come up with a general formula. Okay, and then after we do that, we, the, we then have to multiply everything by 1 half. So um, we're multiplying the entire equation. I'll just do this in pink by 1 half, which means... So basically, that, that means that um, it's going to cancel this 2 out, obviously. Um, but we have to divide this by 2. We have to divide this by 2. We have to divide this by 2. And we have to cut this in half. So that's going to leave us with 0 pi over 2, pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, plus pi over 8. Now, we could have just added the pi over 4 in first and then multiplied by 1 half, and that certainly would work. I just find that usually this works out a little bit better. OK? So now that we have theta by itself, which was what we wanted to do, we wanted to isolate the variable. Um, now we can basically simplify this on the right in order to combine. So now we basically have to take, let's do the red arrows again. Uh, we have to add the pi of rate to each of these terms after we've you know, multiplied it by 1 half. In order to do that, we have to have a common denominator across the bottom. So these 2's need to turn an 8. So all these fractions are going to be multiplied by 4 over 4. 
Step six is to write the general formula for the inverse. So here's where the simplification comes in. We're multiplying everything in parentheses by 4 over 4, so they all turn to 8 denominators. So we end up with 0 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8, and 8 pi over 8. The 4 distributes to the top and to the bottom. Now we can add the pi over 8. Now, I will say this. This is what? This is 1 pi over 8, right? Pi over 8 is 1 pi over 8. So we're ultimately going to be adding 1 to each of these. So, it's, so the first one is going to become 0 plus 1 is 1. The second one is going to be 4 plus 1 is 5. The third one is going to be 8 plus 1 is 9. That's going to give us our pattern. Look, I even showed it right here. So, uh, final answer before the formula, theta is not equal to 1 pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, 9 pi over 8. Now, let me ask you this. And I'm going to kind of be showing the pattern for this a little bit different way when we did arithmetic sequence formulas. Uh, what's the common difference between these coefficients, 1, 5, and 9? It's 4, right? So, we're going to write out our formula for an arithmetic sequence because the common difference is the same. Remember, it's a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. Now, we can see that the common difference is 4, right? So we're going to write that, and we can see that our first term, we're talking about just the coefficients, by the way. We're not talking about any other part of the formula because that doesn't change. It's all pi over 8. What changes are the coefficients. Okay, so the first coefficient is 1, and the common difference between the coefficients is 4. Now that we've written that out, and we have it written over here, we can simplify this formula. We're going to do that on the next page. So it's going to be 1 plus, and then you're going to distribute the 4 to both of these terms. It's going to be 1 plus 4n minus 4, and then we will simplify that. So 1 plus 4n minus 4. Well, then 1 minus 4 can become negative 3, and then the other is just 4n. I'll show that like this. The 1 minus 4 becomes minus 3, and then you just carry the 4n down. So your, your answer, whoops, I didn't mean to move that. Um, your answer, answer for your coefficients is 4n minus 3. In other words, all of these coefficients have the formula 4n minus 3 using this uh, general formula for arithmetic sequences. So all these are going to be replaced with 4n minus 3, and the pi over 8 stays. Hence, final answer, theta cannot be equal to 4n minus 3 times pi over 8. Therefore, the domain... 4, and we'll, we'll go ahead and write it, f of theta is equal to um, such, it's equal to any theta except, so theta not equal to, 4 and minus 3 times pi over 8. So if you plug in any number here for n, you're going to get an angle back that you cannot plug into the original function, this one right here. Okay, so for example, example, excuse me, if I were to plug in 1 right here for n, I'm going to go ahead and do that on the next page. Okay, so if I plug in 1 here, I get 4 minus 3, which is 1, so I get pi over 8. So we're saying that theta cannot be equal to pi over 8. If we plug in 2, we get 5 pi over 8, and so on and so forth. We're saying none of those you can plug in. So anything that looks like this, you cannot plug in. So let's go ahead and plug in pi over 8 to the original function. So if we plug in pi over 8, uh, we get 2 times pi over 8, which is pi over 4. Pi over 4 minus pi over 4 is 0, and cosecant of 0 is undefined. Remember on the unit circle, cosecant is 1 over y. Well, if y is equal to 0, 1 over 0 is undefined, right? And this is, again, this is at 0 degrees. So cosecant is undefined at 0, and therefore we, this, this is confirming that indeed we can't plug in pi over 8 into this function because we get an undefined back. Therefore, there's going to be an asymptote there. Going back to our trig functions, there would be a red asymptote here at, at 0 for the graph of 2 cosecant of 2 theta minus pi over 4, which was our original function. So there would be an asymptote there at 0. That's it for this example of finding the domain of this cosecant function using these six basic steps. If you have any other questions about this, let me know.